Hey everyone, it's day nine on the show and today we're going to start to dig into dependency injection and services and we're either going to dip our toes into the unit testing waters. So it's going to be fun. Look forward to hanging out. So we left our app here where we could actually add to the timeline. Uh, but there was a lot of stuff, that logic that was happening in here that was all being done by this component, all the heavy lifting operations. So today we want to set that right by refactoring it into something that's far more reusable. Now, when I glance across our feed component, I see these tweets, like they belong in a tweet service, obviously. Uh, but the thing that irritates me even more is this kind of hard-coded literal here that's happening for the current user. Now that sounds like pretty low-hanging fruit, so let's get started in that department. I'm gonna just bring up my admin console here, and I'm gonna introduce you to another command. We've, we've done before, we've done ng generate and we've done components before but today we're going to generate a service um, so in our case you can also use abbreviations so i'm going to go g for generate s for service and then i'm going to say this is going to be the the user service okay so this is going to be providing our current user you see when it gets written it'll be written as a service and a matching test file so nothing changed in our app yet but we now have these two new components that we can start doing some work with in our user service this is going to be a class that's going to provide the current user so in this, I'm, I'm simply going to implement our uh, get current user, which is going to return a string. If you haven't used this in TypeScript before, you'll recall that this colon operator is specifying the type of the return value of this function. So, and it's highlighted now because we haven't returned anything yet. So, and for, for now, I'm actually just going to hard code this in here. Uh, because I'm, it's the process of abstracting that I most care about. So I now have a user service that's going to do some of my heavy lifting, and you'll notice it's marked as injectable. So that is telling Angular that this is a service class that can be injected somewhere in this operation. But we haven't said where and we haven't said how, but we have marked this as injectable. So we've said this is a class that can be injected. So what I'm going to do actually is go and introduce you as, at the same time to our test class. So this test class uses a mechanism called Jasmine or a library called Jasmine for all the unit testing, which has a BDD style of uh, flow to it. So uh, we're going to write our first test. Now there's a lot of boilerplate happening here. Describe is, is basically a, like the test suite and it is the equivalent of an individual test. So it should, um, so our user should return a static value of Glenn for now. Now I've got my user service injecting. I'm going to call get current user on that, and I'm going to expect that to be. I'm going to actually fail this test first because it's always good to have a failing test. Okay, so I've got this test, and I know in the background everything's compiling and running and automatically, but I just want to run those that test. And for this, I can use the new ng test command. So I can go ng test. In my case, I'm not going to build. Uh, and I'm actually not going to watch. Uh, by default, it's going to watch, which means it's going to stay running and continuously running my tests. But I've already got a continuous runner here, and I don't want to cause any drama with that. So I'm just going to build and what, um, neither build nor watch because I know my automatic runner is running. So Karma sparks up, which is the test runner here, and it says one of my tests has failed. I expected Glenn to be Glenn's. Now this is kind of interesting. So in J in it, you'd have expected comma actual as the normal parameter flow, but in uh, karma, it's the other way around. So it's actual um, to be expected. So they use this here, uh, it's called a matcher, and there's a whole range of different matches that you can use. So I'm gonna fix that match so it actually does match Glenn, and then I'm just gonna rerun the same ng test, minus minus build equals false, minus minus watch equals false. And the tests will run and I'll see the results here. Later on in the series, we're actually gonna switch from a browser-based test runner to just a command line test runner using PhantomJS, but uh, for now this will do just fine. And all my tests are passing and I can feel like I'm winning. Okay, so I know that my user test uh, is firing. I know that my user service is returning the right value. How can I go about actually injecting this? There's a few steps for that to happen. Uh, first of all, there's a, a a section here in the metadata where we have to say providers. Now providers is to tell uh, the component, the factory for injecting any particular service. So in my case, I'm gonna have a user service that's going to provide some a component to my feed component. And I'm going to have to import that as well. So let me just import user service. And in my case, it's uh, from 
dot dot slash user dot service. You remember when you do these imports, you don't put the TS, you don't put the TS here, you just leave it like that. So my user service is now imported, no, not injected yet, but it is actually imported and I know that there's a factory for it. The injection is actually done pretty much automatically by Angular. So you simply have to declare the variable of the right type. So, so I'm gonna have a, a user service here, which is gonna be a type user service. And just by the fact that I've declared this uh, and it's marked as having a provider, this is gonna get automatically injected. So once that's automatically injected, I can actually start using it. So let's find all these glands. In fact, let's just select all of those ones. And then I'm going to replace that with this dot uh, user service dot get current user. Great. So I've now I'm calling the user service to get the current user all the way through this. Still a lot of ugliness here. We're going to refactor this again tomorrow, and we're going to sort out this whole feed service situation, which is a bit of a schmozzle. But for now, let's just be happy that we've refactored out all of our glens and our app is still running. In fact, if I was to create a new entry, create a new entry and tweet it, then we'd find it is actually owned by me. So the next thing uh, that I want to check out though is the view. So I've, I've made the backing component now aware of the user service, but what about the view? Because there's still stuff in here where we go, you know, tweet.favorites. Uh, and this is no good either. So let's just control D our way through those. In fact, there's only the two of them. And I can say user service dot get current user. And I can put that in the view tier as well. So we have this injected into the component and we'll find that when this refreshes again, I can add myself here still and it knows that I'm in these collections and whatnot. So that's really it for today, team. So the ideas from today were really the ability to declare a um, service by a generator service, and then the ability to uh, test that service by giving it some expected values, then the ability to inject it into an actual component, in our case, the feed component, by adding it to the providers list. Now, one final note about this, we've declared this on the feed component, which means that every time a feed component is created, this user service factory will be invoked and a new user service will be generated. So you have an alternative here. You don't have to scope it at this level. You can actually scope it several other places. One other place that you might want to scope it is just at the root of your component hierarchy. So at our root component, our app component TS, I can declare it here and then any components that are generated, I might just grab our import as well while I'm here. And then any component that, are, that is in the subtree of this component tree can make use of this same user service. So that's another place you could def define it at the app component. And there's another place you can define it as well. If you say, well, not only do I want my component tree to access this service, in the case of user service, that makes a lot of sense. I may actually want to export this user service to other components in my application outside of my particular module. So what I can do then is to take this out of the user service and put it even higher at the module level. So I've got this providers here. I can put my user service in here. Now this has the implication though that if I'm going to export it from the module as it provides here, it means that other components in this application that aren't in this module can take advantage of, them, of my user service. And for something like a user service, that makes a whole lot of sense. So we might as well just declare it at this level. And everything's still working as, as expected. Everything is still tweeting and we can still favorite and retweet and do all the things that we do. So that wraps up today. We've done some testing. We've declared some providers and created some services and tested those services and looked at scoping and how we can provide those services at either the component level or at the tree level or at the module level where the service is actually exported to our whole application. Tomorrow we'll dig into the feed service and we'll really start refactoring out a lot of the mess that's been gradually uh, accumulating in that uh, feed component and refactoring it into a feed service. Can't wait for that. It's gonna be great. We'll see you then.